how lenders determine your debt to income ratio just by looking at your credit report. Yes, it is true. I'm gonna jump into this lesson by showing you a sample credit report. Stay tuned. I am Victoria Langford, your credit solutionist and lead debt elimination strategist over at mycreditcall.com. I am also the author of the 90 day rapid repair mini ebook. If you are looking to get a quick boost to your credit score of 100 points or more in the next 90 days flat, guaranteed. Now I don't guarantee very many things on this channel, but if you follow the steps outlined in this mini ebook, you are going to be on your way to securing your financial future. Future. I want you to check the links down in the description to get a copy. If you have any trouble downloading said copy, go ahead and shoot me an email at Langford uh, or at support at LangfordSolutions.com. That is support at LangfordSolutions.com if you have an issue downloading that ebook. So once again, we are going to be talking about how lenders are able to determine your DTI or debt to income ratio by simply looking at your credit report, even though there is no income reported on that credit report. So let's jump in. I'm gonna show you guys here a sample credit report. Here, we're looking at your personal information. First, they're gonna compare what you put on the application to what is on the credit report, okay? I've actually seen some credit reports cause people to get denials because the name as it appeared on the credit report was not who the individual actually was. It wasn't necessarily identity theft, but it could be a situation where family members have the same name. Think junior, senior, first, second, and third, those kinds of things can actually get you a denial. Next, they're gonna be checking your employment records. Do you have steady income coming in? When you have a job, your income is already set for the year because you have your annual salary. This is a low key way that they can look also to determine whether or not you are getting steady, regular income. Technically speaking, even though this wasn't part of my lesson, yes, collections can actually dictate what a lender or potential lender is how they're gonna scrutinize your application. If it is something that's like 10 plus years ago, number one, it shouldn't even be appearing on your credit report because things that are negative should actually only be reporting for seven years and that's it. You need to be doing some disputes and getting them to remove this information from your credit report. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of the DTI situation. So let's say you make $25,000 per year. $25,000 per year divided by 12 means that you are making $2,083 per month and that is gross. So after taxes, I'm going to take you down to about $1,600 and trust me, I'm being generous there. So we're going to say that you make about $1,600 monthly. Now the very first bill that you'll see on this credit report is a payment of $240 for a car loan, an installment car loan. So remember that that's $240 right then and there that you are going to be paying to someone else other than me as the lender for the next 12 months. The lender now has to account that into your monthly income. Next, we have a convenient credit card here. It's a revolving charge account. And that one has a due balance of $48. So we're gonna add that onto the 240. So now I'm starting to think, okay, this person has employment, but let me start doing some numbers here because now this person's almost $300 in the hole. The next thing that they have as far as a bill, though it is a positive account, it's $115 per month for a student loan. And who knows how long that person's gonna be paying that off. I could stand to reason that you're gonna be paying that off for quite a few years. So that's another amount that they're gonna deduct from that $1,600 of your monthly income after taxes. Now the next one, it says closed, but we're going to pretend for the purposes of this lesson that it is open. And as you can see, the highlighted amount is $85. So here is the math that I'm gonna go ahead and do, because I think that this was our very last one. I'm gonna do my math. Let's say 
you got that 1600 right and that's your net take home let's take away that 240 dollar bill that you have every single month and then the 48 dollar one that we saw on the credit report and then that 115 dollars that we know is going to come out and then that 85 dollars now that leaves you with disposable income of 1112 dollars now if i am the lender here's the other thing that is going to be on my application that i'm going to wonder about even though you have $1,112 left over after all of your obligations on that credit report that I was able to see, I also have to take into consideration as a potential lender that there are bills that you have that I have not seen. I have to think about what is your grocery bill? How many people live in your house? I also have to think about because you have a car, I now know that you have insurance and I know that you pay for gas in that vehicle. I'm gonna say that you spend $250 on groceries per month, okay? I'm also gonna assume that for your gas, you're spending at least $50, let's say per week. So we're gonna do, well, let's say every two weeks. So I'll take out $100. You now have 762. I'm gonna say that your entertainment costs, maybe your toiletries, things like that, are gonna run you about $100 every single month. Now you're down to 662. Ah, uh, did I deduct your car insurance? I'm not sure, I don't think that I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off at least 150. You're left with a whopping $512. If you only have $512 left over after all of your expenses, those that I can and cannot see, we have not even factored in the biggest expense that everybody has, which is housing. So I'm gonna put the calculator back on the screen, $512 and you live in Los Angeles. I already know that your rent is at least $1,500. So I'm gonna be gracious and take that off. Let's take it off. All right, let's do it because we're, we're feeling frisky today. So we're gonna take off 1,500. You are now in the hole, negative $988. As a lender, do I really believe that making $25,000, you applying for a $10,000 limit credit card when you're already negative for the bills that I see on your credit report and then your everyday expenses that I can assume that you have, why would I approve your credit card application? <laughs> You come here to get the reality, okay? So this is what lenders do when they look at your credit report and determine your debt to income ratio. There is always gonna be a way for a lender to look at your credit report and determine that was a lie. If I make $100,000 per year, why in the world do I still have an outstanding car loan? Why do I still have an outstanding student loan? You make enough money that you should be able to pay those things off in theory. You shouldn't have any running balances. So why do you if you already make six figures? So this is how lenders are able to tell, oh, you're not telling the truth on your income portion of your application. So let's look at your credit report to do a compare and contrast. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson for today. And I, your Credit Solutionist, will see you guys on the next live stream. Credit Solutionist, ah! <laughs>